So we are looking at problem 31 from your unit 6 note packet. And this is how we are going to solve a quadratic inequality. So if you look at our problem here, um, hopefully one of the first things you notice is that now we have an inequality symbol instead of an equal sign um, next to our quadratic. So we've been looking at quadratic equations. Now this is a quadratic inequality. Um, so we're going to treat this kind of like we would treat a regular quadratic equation up until like the middle part of the solving process. Then we're going to come back around and look at the inequality symbol. So we're going to start just by writing this out as if it were a regular equal sign or a regular equation. So I have x squared plus x minus 2 equals 4. Now we want to put it in standard form and we do that by subtracting 4 from both sides. So that leaves us with x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. Now, in order to put this on the graph, we want some reference points. So the first thing I want is my x-intercepts. And the x-intercepts are really important when you're solving a quadratic inequality because those are going to be your boundary points and you're going to need those for your solution. So I could just plop this in my calculator and also graph the line y equals 0 and find the intersection points. But since we're leading into factoring anyways, let's go ahead and factor this. So I want factors of negative 6. Um, and I want the factors of negative 6 that add up to positive 1. Because if you look at my equation, my b value is positive 1 because I have x squared plus 1x minus 6. Um, so the factors of negative 6 that I want are going to be negative 2 and positive 3 because they multiply to negative 6, but they also add to positive 1. So that allows me to factor the trinomial into the binomials x minus 2, x plus 3, and now those equal 0. Um, the quick way to do this is just to, in your head, solve each of those separate linear equations, but in a second I will skip over to another slide and show you some more details. But from the first binomial x minus 2, we know that the x value is going to be positive 2. And from the second binomial x plus 3, we know that the x value is going to equal negative 3. Um, so let me just skip over to another slide really quick and show you the details behind that. So if you look at the top half of this screen, um, you can see where these x values are coming from. So we're using the zero product property here where we take each binomial and set them equal to zero. So the first binomial x minus 2 equals 0. If we add 2 to both sides, then we get x equals 2. The second binomial, if x plus 3 equals 0 and we subtract 3 from both sides, then x equals 3. So we get our two x-intercepts 2 comma 0 and 3 comma 0. So I'm going to go back to that other slide. Um, so now I have x equals 2 and I have x equals negative 3. So what I'm able to do now is I am able to get my x-intercepts. So I'm able to get my x-intercepts. So my first x-intercept is at the ordered pair 2 comma 0. My other x-intercept is at the ordered pair negative 3 comma 0. So let's plot those on the graph. And while I'm at it, let me use the c value of the equation 0 or negative 6 to get my y-intercept, which is at 0, negative 6. Now, it would also be nice if I had the vertex of this parabola just to get a nice, accurate graph. Um, so I'm going to pop on over to the next slide just to show you the steps for getting the vertex of the graph. So if you look at the bottom, um, I have the the parabola written in function form. So I have f of x equals x squared plus x minus 6. So I've listed my a, b, and c values. And then I'm using x equals negative b over 2a. That gives me the x value of negative 1 half. So remember, that's the input value of my vertex. And then I plug that in as x so I can find the output value. So you can see I did my skeleton method. So everywhere I see x, I have negative 1 half. And then I get an output value of negative 6.25. So my vertex is at negative 0 0.5 comma negative 6.25. So you might want to jot that down so when I go back to the other screen, you remember where that came from. 
So now that we've found our vertex, let's go ahead and plot it. So there I have my vertex at negative 0 0.5 comma negative 6.25. And then I'm going to use symmetry to get one other point on my parabola. So I'm just going to look across from the y-intercepts, which was at 0, negative 6. And that means I'd have another ordered pair at negative 1, negative 6. So now I'm going to do my best to draw a nice parabola through my five plotted points. Um, and now we need to go back to the fact that this was an inequality, remember. Um, so our goal here isn't just to graph the parabola. Our goal is to find the solution to this inequality. So since the inequality is a greater than inequality, I want to ask myself, for what values of x is the parabola above the line y equals 0? And the reason I'm asking above is because my inequality was greater than. So if it's greater than, it means I'm looking above the line y equals 0. Now remember, the line y equals 0 is the same as the x-axis. So I'm looking for the parts of the parabola that are above the x-axis. Well, if I look at my parabola, I'm going to highlight in yellow here, the parts of the parabola that are above the x-axis are the two tails. That's what I like to call them, the two tails, the two parts with the arrows. So underneath the x-axis is the u part of the parabola where the vertex is, but above the x-axis is those two tails. Now, you'll notice I, I colored in the x-intercepts with solid dots, and the reason I did that is because we are a greater than or equal to. So that means we're going to include those closed dots. Um, if we were just a greater than, then we would have open circles there, and we would use parentheses instead of brackets when we write our solution. But since we are a greater than or equal to, that means we're going to have solid dots right there. Okay, so now I'm ready to write my solution. So again, my solution is based on my x values. So I want to know for what x values is the parabola above the x-axis. So for what x values do I need to include those tails of the parabola? So if I imagine those, those, those arrows of the parabola or those tails kind of mapping down to the x-axis, I would go all the way to the left towards negative infinity, and I'd go all the way to the right towards positive infinity. But I'd have this gap in the middle because I'm being bounded by my x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are at negative 3 and positive 2. So now let's take a look at how I write my solution. So I'm starting at negative infinity, so that gets a parenthesis, and then I'm going all the way into negative 3. But then I'm going to stop and put a bracket at negative 3 because I'm including that endpoint. Then I have this gap between negative 3 and positive 2 where nothing's happening. Um, so what we use is the union symbol. And if you look at the bottom of your notes sheet, it talks more about the union symbol. But that means we're joining two sections of the x-axis together. So I'm skipping over that gap between negative 3 and positive 2, but then I'm going to start again with a bracket at positive 2. And then at positive 2, I'm going all the way to the right towards infinity. So that is my solution to this whole entire problem. I know I had to graph it to get a visual aspect of it, but the actual solution is this interval notation right here. So the parabola is above the x-axis for the x values that are from negative infinity to negative 3. And then I stop and jump on over to positive 2 all the way to positive infinity.